US, the National Union of Students, and I'm here today to, to coordinate um, the webinar and to coordinate our speakers, um, which marks the launch of a new Green Impact Program for Dentistry. So just a few little pieces of housekeeping first. Um, we're going to mute um, people's microphones when they're not speaking. That's because not because we don't want to hear from you, but just because we find it delivers a much better quality webinar without any background noise. But there is a chat box. Um, so there's a little speech bubble icon on your screen and you can use that to leave any questions with this, um, whether they're technical about, about the webinar software, if you're struggling to use it, or about content, so things that we're discussing. And we'll either respond immediately or stall them for the Q&A at the end of the session, um, depending on your questions. Also to let you know that the session is going to be recorded and that's to make it available to those who are unable to make it this evening. And although it's very tempting, um, hopefully um, we'll, we'll be with you for about 45 minutes to an hour and wherever possible we ask that you focus on the session um, so, that, so that you get the most from it. In terms of what we're going to be covering today, we're going to um, do a brief introduction to sustainable healthcare. Um, we know that this is this was the main topic of the previous webinar that was hosted, and therefore we're not going to go into a huge amount of detail, but we will signpost you to some, some further background resources if you'd like to know more about sustainable healthcare, and particularly in dentistry. And then to mark the launch of the Green Impact Programme, we're going to introduce that. We're going to tell you a little bit about the benefits, about the approach we've taken to date, and about what the rest of the year looks like for that programme. We'll share with you some um, opportunities to get involved and suggest some different approaches that you might want to take to really engage your whole practice in the Green Impact Programme. And we'll signpost you to some additional resources as well. We know that, that CPD is important for everybody and therefore um, we've uh, this is a CPD approved uh, webinar. These are the learning objectives that we've set for this after, uh, this evening. It's this evening now, isn't it? So these are the learning objectives and um, following the webinar, we'll be sending you a link to a short online survey, which will quiz you for your knowledge around these three learning objectives. Um, and should you should you pass those, those, those that quiz, you'll be sent um, a CPD certificate um, after the webinar. Um, via the email address that you use to register. So we're going to cover different social change theories that underpin change management and successful engagement with sustainability. So Green Impact is fundamentally a change management programme, so we'll have a look at the social change theories that underpin that. Hopefully you'll have an increased skill set to engage other individuals um, within your practice and your lives, as well as organisations and sustainability. And then we'll be looking at the knowledge and practical skills needed to improve the environmental sustainability of dental healthcare systems, particularly using the Green Impact tool. As I said, I'm very happy to take questions. Um, probably um, it will be easier to take them at the end, but if you have burning questions, do please use that, that chat box function. And I'm going to start by handing over to Sarah Harford, who um, is or has been the Sustainable Dentistry Scholar for the Centre for Sustainable Healthcare um, for the last two years. And she's been absolutely critical in helping us develop the Green Impact Tool. So I'm going to pass over to Sarah um, to introduce sustainability in healthcare and dentistry. Thanks, Charlotte. So hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Harford, and I've been a Sustainable Dentistry Scholar, as Charlotte said. So I was supported by CSH and Health Education England to undertake relevant projects which promote the sustainable use of resources in the provision of high quality dental care. So I'm interested in supporting the sustainability agenda and I also work clinically as a dentist. So I'm going to talk to you a bit about sustainability in healthcare, how it relates to dentistry, and as Charlotte said, also signpost you to some useful and interesting resources, which you can then access to find out more and get involved. Next slide. So sustainability is a bit of a buzzword at the moment, but what do we actually know about it or what it means? Well, if we talk about a sustainable world, this means one that aims to ensure that the basic needs and the quality of life of everyone are met. So for now, but also for our future generations. And when we try to be sustainable in healthcare, we want to maximise the best possible outcomes for our patients and populations. But we also have to take into consideration the environmental and the social and the financial impacts of what we're doing in our healthcare. So these are nicely labelled the triple bottom line. 
So we can see this in the diagram here that's illustrated, which shows that relationship between these dimensions. And when we're aware of the resources being used and the impacts being created, we can try to achieve the best possible outcomes from each of these dimensions. And when they meet together in the middle, that's when we can achieve sustainable healthcare. Next slide. Unfortunately, the current delivery of healthcare in our modern world isn't sustainable due to our rising financial costs, our increasing demands, but also the high environmental burden of our healthcare, which unfortunately has negative consequences for our environment. And these are listed here. So we've got greenhouse gas emissions, we've got rising air pollution, biodiversity loss, bioaccumulation, toxicity, and our resources becoming more and more scarce. But also the environment is a major determinant of health. And so environmental destruction can also be seen as a global health problem. So we think that it's paramount that as health professionals, so that's our dentists included, we need to consider the relationship between the health of our planet but also the human health that we're trying to achieve within our practice. Next slide. So in 2014-15, Public Health England and the Centre for Sustainable Healthcare carried out a study which calculated the carbon footprint of dentistry. Another buzzword you probably hear a lot, carbon footprint. I'm not going to go into detail about that, but we can see here in the pie chart that the study found the emission areas that make up the carbon footprint of dentistry. And it found that 64.5% related to patient and staff travel. Altogether from energy, it was 15.3% and then 19% from procurement. So interestingly, an area which maybe we weren't aware of before, it's travel that makes up the highest proportion of emissions. Next slide. So travel, the use of energy, the rising air pollution, procurement and production of waste are areas that many are aware have an environmental impact. But we are also concerned with other areas in dentistry which do, um, for example, our dental materials. So the dental profession around the world has recently or more recently in the last couple of years been concerned with the environmental impact um, of our dental materials, particularly amalgam, um, highlighted uh, it also by the Minamata Treaty. Next slide. However, it's not just the impact of amalgam on the environment we need to consider. Um, there's an article here which was published last year in the BDJ, which describes the impact of both amalgam and also resin-based composites as they both leach out into the water systems um, both when we're placing and removing them from our patient's teeth. So we've got to be mindful of this. And it seems we're just beginning to become aware of that. And it will be interesting to see how our knowledge of this hopefully develops with further research and whether that will change our practice is something we will wait and see. Next slide. So we've got a growing list of accessible resources about sustainability in dentistry. If you want to find out more and get involved, for example, we've just published two articles in the BDJ, which are two of a series of seven. Um, the following five will be coming out within the next six months. Here's the title of one of the articles there, um, which introduces you to the concept of sustainability, how it relates to dentistry. And then each article after that covers a section, for example, energy use within the practice, procurement, so buying equipment for the practice, also travel, as we talked about, um, biodiversity, and also how to start making these changes within your practice. So they're a really good series of articles to get um, and read if you can. We will also be following this webinar with another one to launch a guide. And we launched our guide with a first webinar recording, which 
the link is just displayed there for you, um, which was available on our website. And Francis, who will be talking later, will also signpost you to these. So this recording will be available um, alongside the first webinar we did and future webinars on that website. Next slide. And back to you, Charlotte. Brilliant. Thank you much, so much, Sarah. Um, I wonder actually whether um, now would be a good time to check in to see if there's any questions content wise, because that's obviously a, a whistle stop tour of, of kind of some of the really key reasons behind why we're launching Green Impact um, and why sustainability in dentistry is important. But because it's a little bit of a benchmark in the in the webinar, I wonder if anybody has any questions for Sarah um, while she's still with us. Will, I don't have access to the chat bar, so I'm going to ask you to, to double check for me. No, no questions. Great. You got off scot free, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you feel Thanks free again. to? I was just going to say, you know, questions can come up in the chat box, which we can pick up at the end as well. Yeah, absolutely. Lovely stuff. Um, so before I get into the nitty gritty of Green Impact, I'm going to put another person on the spot. Linda, I know that you're with us and I've been working with Linda for the last couple of months to, to shape the Green Impact programme that we're launching today. So perhaps you want to tell us a little bit about the history of the programme from your perspective, Linda, in terms of um, why it's come to fruition and why, why, why we're launching it today. I think we might have to unmute her, Will. Sorry, just to explain that, I don't have control of her mute. Ah, uh, you don't? Okay, she's um, the lady that dialed in via the telephone. That's right. Ah, okay. In that case, we possibly won't be able to. Hopefully, I'll be able to do that justice through my own rhetoric. So, um, Linda uh, Hillman, who's a um, consultant uh, for Public Health England, um, has worked with NHS England East of England uh, and myself to, to fund and develop um, a green impact programme for dentistry. And this is recognising that sustainability is a very big, complex, broad subject. Um, and what was felt needed was a, a, a resource to help practices to really understand what sustainability means to them and what improvements they can make. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis within their practices to improve the sustainability of their work, but also what we can do to showcase the good practice that's going on across the sector. So she approached um, me at the National Union of Students, which may seem like a, an unlikely bed value, but we have a, a very strong sustainability team doing a host of behaviour change, engagement, curriculum reform, campaigning, campaigning and advocacy work around sustainability. And for the last decade, we've been running Green Impact in a host of different sectors. So we have, um, we've worked with multiple NHS trusts, we've worked with um, the Royal College of GPs, we've worked with um, small businesses across various different local authorities, as well as universities and colleges and students unions utilizing the green impact program to really engage people in sustainability and help support people to make positive impacts um, in their in their local areas and in their businesses so we've been working since um, probably October to really shape what that program could look like for dentistry, bringing in various different stakeholders um, from across the sector to, to develop a program that we're launching today. So we run Green Impact um, to really enable change and to create a norm of sustainability. We also want to provide excellent development opportunities for students and so throughout the programme there'll be opportunities for you to work with local students to enhance your work. And we really want to enable staff, student and community collaboration to catalyse further sustainability work. So quite a broad remit in terms of what we're trying to achieve but like I say through the programme We've worked with hundreds of different organisations, hundreds of thousands of different people, and every year train thousands of students in skills that help them become sustainability change makers in their future lives and careers. So we're really happy to be working with the dentistry sector. Um, and we know, like I say, that we can make a positive impact. And although depending on where you're starting from and depending on um, how much 
uh, how much enthusiasm you have, the the impact that you see as a practice will be will be different depending on on your own personal circumstances. But these are the kind of benefits that we that we expect to see through the program. So we expect to see staff development opportunities. We expect to see reduced water waste um, and energy uh, for your practice. We um, will help you get participation from across your whole practice. So you've got colleagues. Um, supporting this work um, throughout the practice um, will really help incentivize and celebrate your achievements so um, there'll be some reputation building um, opportunities uh, for participants as well so there's lots and lots of different benefits that we've seen realized by other organizations taking part in the program historically that we've been working to make sure we realize in this program for dentistry as well and although um, this is a, a new program um, and like I say it's focusing on um, the Anglia and Essex region initially because of the, the funding streams and because of the, the different stakeholders that come together. There'll be an active support program for practices in Anglia and Essex but there's no reason why practices from across the UK can't use the toolkit and use the resources that we've developed um, throughout the year as well. We do have some experience of working in dental practices. In 2014, we were approached by the postgraduate dental school at the University of Bristol, who'd been involved in their university's green impact for a number of years. And they really wanted to do some work with the trainee practices that they were sending their, their students to. Um, and so they developed a green impact programme with our support, which um, reached 50 practices across the area. Um, and they they did really well, actually, for a short term programme. And um, we, we reached a lot of different people. Um, we were able to, to accredit um, the vast majority of practices within the programme with an award. And I'll come on to those in a little while um, shortly. But from just three of the toolkit actions that we had identified, nearly £25,000 um, were estimated as saved across those practices um, and a huge amount of CO2 as well. And that's just looking at three actions from a toolkit which contained hundreds. So we're not able to monitor um, the direct impacts of the programme across the whole toolkit, but you can start to see some of the savings that, that were reported through that programme as well. So we've been building on the knowledge of that practice, um, sorry, of that pilot in 2004. 14-15. SARA has been incredibly helpful in translating the toolkit that was developed back then for for today for 2019 so really looking at what resources available what um, advancements they've been in research and in, into sustainable dentistry to make sure that the toolkit we've developed learns from the pilot but it's really fit for purpose for today. In terms of the program and how it works, um, this it's a cyclical program, and right now um, we're we're between the twelve o'clock and two o'clock boxes. So the last couple of months have all been about planning and toolkit development. So we've we've um, reached out to a number of practices. We've been to see some in terms of what their their day to day sustainability work looks like. We've um, researched best practice across the sector. Um, we've looked at what other organisations are doing. Um, and we've pulled together the, the knowledge and expertise of various different sector bodies to develop a toolkit that practices are able to use to see what sustainable dentistry really looks like for them. What does it mean to be a sustainable practice, but also breaks it down into smaller manageable chunks so that um, practices can start to make improvements without being um, overwhelmed by the broadness, by the, by the breadth of the sustainability agenda. So I'll show you the toolkit in a little while. Um, and now we're on to the second box, practice recruitment. So as of today, practices will be able to, to register to use the toolkit. I'm really pleased to say that we've already had some today on launch day um, register, which is fantastic. Um, and you'll then be able to access the resources that we've pulled together and start to use that toolkit to, to make improvements to, to your day to day work. It's not just a static programme though, it's not purely about the, the toolkit and there'll be plentiful ongoing support available to practices in the Anglia and Essex region. So you'll have one-to-one um, -one support from, from myself um, and I'll be able to help troubleshoot any issues that you're coming up against or signpost to resources that might be able to help. We'll be running numerous CPD webinars, um, we'll be sharing good practice between participant practices and we'll be keeping you up to date with relevant news and events that will enhance your sustainability work. So although the toolkit is the backbone of the programme, the support package that goes alongside it is really there to enhance um, the benefits that the toolkit provides 
provides you and make your participation in the programme as easy and as impactful as possible. Later in the year, in November, we'll ask you to submit your toolkit for, um, for audit. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you have to stop doing your work, but it's definitely to show us a snapshot of what's been achieved this year. So um, at that point, we will recruit and train uh, local students, dentistry students, um, and students from other disciplines as well who have an interest in sustainability in the workplace. And they're trained to IEMA standards, which is the Institute of Environmental Managers and Assessors. And they'll then come either face-to-face -face or remotely to, to verify the work that you've done. But they're also there to provide further support and collect your feedback because it's really important to us that the programme is iterative, that we respond to participants' needs and that we're, we're making sure it's as useful as possible to the people using the programme. So the students get a good learning opportunity out of that um, and we also know who's achieved what over the course of the year, after which we'll have an awards event. Now this is it yet to be decided in terms of when and where but it's basically an opportunity to really showcase the fabulous work that's going on across the sector and to recognize the work that you've put in in your practice as well and then the final stage of the cycle before we go back to planning is all about feedback and evaluation so during this stage we harvest the information that's been submitted through the toolkit we harvest the information that's been given to us through the audits and we also harvest the information that's been given to us by participants, by stakeholders throughout the year, so that we know exactly what the impacts of the programme have been, but also how we can continue to improve the programme um, for future years as well. And that information goes back into the planning and toolkit development. I should also mention that at the feedback and evaluation stage, all participating practices will get an impact report. So you'll be able to use that to showcase your individual achievements, um, as well as understanding the collective uh, achievements of the programme. And it really does take a holistic approach to sustainability. So we're not focusing on one particular area. Obviously, we've looked at um, the, the, the priority areas that the SAR introduced in terms of uh, patient and staff travel. So we've started to tackle some of those issues early on in the toolkit because we know that quite often people start at the beginning in the bronze section and so um, we've included a lot of those travel actions but there's also um, activities relating to, um, to communication um, with your patients uh, there's actions in there relating to procurement to biodiversity to waste and recycling to energy and so on and so forth too so it really does take a holistic approach to what the sustainability agenda means and there's some flexibility within the system as well so you can pick and choose the areas that are most of interest to you and that you feel will be most impactful so i'm just going to switch now to show you the toolkit itself so you can have a little look at, at um, you can visualise what that looks like. Can somebody confirm for me that you can now see a web browser rather than the slides? Yes, I can see that, shall I? Perfect, lovely. So when you first go to www.greenimpact.org.uk dentists, um, you'll uh, initially be asked to register using a green button on the right hand side. I've already registered and logged in to be able to show you through the toolkit today and I've done that using an example login and if you'd like to have uh, access to the example login when you first um, look at the toolkit I'm more than happy to share that with you before you register your practice to be, be a full-on um, participant of the programme. So there's lots of information at the beginning just um, introducing you to, to how the programme works and what it looks like and then it's split into four sections um, here you can see on the left hand side so there's bronze silver and gold actions and we fully anticipate that most people will start with the bronze actions and it's locked me out because I've been here for too long I do apologize let me just sort that out um, there we go. So um, let's have a look at the bronze uh, bronze action. So you can see here there's multiple different um, themes within the actions and there's 24 actions in the bronze section in total. We're asking people to achieve 18 of those to be able to get a bronze award. That might sound like a lot but we fully anticipate that some of these things you'll already be doing because we want to be showcasing existing good practice and celebrating and recognising that as well as uh, encouraging and supporting people to strive for more. 
So within a theme, you can click on the show all button and you can see the different actions within that particular area. So let's have a quick look at this one, which is relating to biodiversity. So it's saying uh, it's asking that within the last year, practice has undertaken one or more proactive initiative to sustain or encourage biodiversity biodiversity, recognising that most practices are within some sort of building or estate. Um, so regardless of whether you're urban or rural, whether you own or lease your, your practice um, buildings, um, there's always something that you can do to enhance biodiversity in your local area. So that's what we're asking you to do. The further information tab gives you as you would expect, further information about the kinds of things that you could do. And it also showcases other resources that might help you, whether it's with case studies of how other practices have implemented that action, whether it's through um, research that, that enhances uh, or, or is the, the rationale behind that particular action. So there's further information for each um, thing we're asking you to do. There'll also be a section on how you'll be audited so you can um, get a heads up about the kinds of things students will be looking for. And then there's also a comments and evidence box. Now, this is completely up to you whether you use this. This is something that isn't a compulsory part of the programme, but we um, invite you to, to include your comments if you find that useful for tracking your achievements. You can upload information as well um, if you uh, find that useful to, to really understand what you've done with regards to the programme. And very simply, when you feel that you've achieved an action, you click the done box. There's a little pop up then that says, are you doing this as a result of Green Impact? And that's to, uh, for us to be able to monitor whether we're showcasing existing good practice or whether we're encouraging you to do new, to do new things through the programme. And it looks exactly the same for each of the sections. So um, each action within the toolkit has the same four boxes and the same buttons at the end. So really intuitive, really easy to use. You just save your changes at the top before um, looking elsewhere, if you're so interested. The other thing that I wanted to share with you, um, because the bronze, silver and gold sections look exactly the same, but the special um, tab is slightly different. So this is here as a more traditional um, awards category um, element to the program. So if there's particular people that you think should get recognition, if you've got fantastic ideas or you've put something into practice that you think other people should be doing this too, that falls outside of the actions that we've presented in the bronze, silver and gold section, the special section is here to really showcase that work, to share that across the sector um, and the winners of the dentistry um, special awards will be pulled into the National Green Impact Awards for those um, special awards as well. So there's particular individuals or initiatives that you've implemented or seen, doesn't matter how big or how small, we'd really love to hear from you. So that's a whistle-stop tour to the toolkit. Uh, like I say, I'm more than happy to share the example uh, login with you if you'd like that before you register your practice. And the best way to get to understand the, uh, how to use it is really to, to log in and have a little play, look at the different sections, see what's in the different pages. So the help section has different, um, there's a user guide to the toolkit, there's links to my email address if you'd like um, further help, it tells you about how the scoring works for the programme. So really invite you to, to log into the toolkit um, and have a look around. Um, to really start to understand exactly what the program is about. So back to the slides. Like I say, there's three awards for the dentistry program this year, um, bronze, silver and gold. And we're asking people to achieve 18 bronze actions, um, 20 silver actions and 30 gold actions um, to be able to achieve those awards. So um, it depends how competitive you are um, or whether you take a, a more collaborative uh, gentle approach to your to your sustainability work. We've seen both work well, but um, we encourage you to start with bronze. They're they're the the, the low hanging fruit, I suppose uh, would be the phrase. Um, and if you have any questions at all as you start to explore them, or any resources that you think would help others implement those actions, we can continue to add to the toolkit as the as the programs delivered throughout the course of the year. So, in terms of timescales, we're launching um, today, we're launching now, and the practice recruitment and ongoing support for practices taking part in the programme will, will be live from now on too. And we're asking people to submit their toolkits by the 6th of November, to be specific, um, with the awards event to be continued, uh, to be confirmed, but that will be at the end of the year, I would imagine, and we'll do our feedback and evaluation at the very end of the calendar year. Um, so those are the kind of timescales that we're working to. And we hope that between 
between now and November, that feels like an achievable amount of time to, to make some improvements, but it's not so distant that you think, oh, this is a nice thing to do, but I don't need to think about it just yet. So that's the, the rationale behind the timing. But um, I'll be honest with you, one of the common pieces of feedback at the end of the year is that we'd always have liked more time. So we'll see. Um, We'll see how we can um, support practices to really um, use the next seven months uh, well. So there's an introduction to the programme. Um, the next section of the webinar is going to be a little bit of advice and guidance based on our experience of how other organisations have tackled the programme um, in terms of different approaches that you can take to really make your participation impactful. But before I go on to that, I wonder if there are any questions about the programme itself, how it's been developed, um, and what participation means for practices. Again, recognising that unfortunately I can't see the slide, uh, the chat box at the moment. But also feel free to unmute yourself if, if that's easier for you. Okay. I'm going to assume not, um, but like I said, there's, there's further opportunities for questions and answers at the end of the session. So in terms of different approaches to take, um, changing behaviours of your, your peers and colleagues is quite often a challenge. Changing procedures operation, organisationally is also sometimes challenging. And there's a number of different social change theories that we've used to both design the Green Impact Programme, but that we also encourage different uh, participants in the programme to think about when tackling uh, Green Impact for the first time. Back in 2008, um, DEFRA um, put a lot of time um, and resource into investigating different ways of enhancing sustainability change and they came up with this really simple model, um, the four E's model, uh, to which they believe and I would, I would buy into this, helps um, create change within an organisation, um, but also within individuals as well. So the first thing people need is some sort of encouragement. And sometimes this can be an incentive, sometimes this can be a penalty, sometimes this can be a positive vision of how brilliant things will be when we've changed, but some sort of encouragement is needed for people. Um, people need to feel engaged. Um, so we've been through a consultation process to develop the toolkit, like I say, we will continue to be iterative in terms of how we, we run the programme and deliver the programme. And similarly, within a practice, to get your colleagues on board, it really helps to engage them in, in the decision making uh, behind which actions you're going to undertake, how to make the changes, what are the benefits going to be for your practice. So rather than being told, this is something we're all going to do, really engaging people in terms of like, this is something I think we should do, how do we best go about it? And by putting those questions into your colleagues' hands, they immediately have ownership of the change um, when, it, when it comes. Exemplification is really helpful, so understanding how other practices have implemented sustainability changes um, is really key to show that it is possible and it is beneficial. And so within the toolkit, wherever possible, we've linked to case studies, some of which are within the guide that Sarah mentioned. Um, and as we uh, deliver the programme, we'll continue to add case studies of practices that are implementing actions from within the toolkit well, so we'll be able to learn from one another throughout the programme. And then finally, change needs to be enabled. And so this might um, mean working with your suppliers or your waste contractors or your energy manager, uh, energy companies to really enable the change that you want to see. Sometimes um, the change that you want isn't yet possible. So it's going to take some innovation or some piloting or some trial and error before you get the change right. Um, but making sure that whatever you're trying to achieve is possible and is impactful is really important. So um, it's one of the reasons that the, the, the support that's available to you um, if you're a practice within Anglia and Essex is really important because if there's challenges that you're facing, it's um, within my remit to help you unblock any challenges. So I can't promise everything to everybody, but I will definitely do my best to, to um, signpost you to relevant resources, to work with the sector bodies that have brought into um, the development and delivery of Green Impact to see what we can do to really unpick any challenges that you're facing. The other thing that we really um, 
aim through programme four is a positive vision. So when you think about um, Martin Luther King's most famous speech, he really sold his dream rather than the nightmare he was currently facing. And an organisation um, I admire very much called Futera, and they're a sustainability communications organisation, and their report, Sell the Sizzle, um, builds on this. It says, if we really want to get people bought into a sustainable future, we need to stop um, selling it as a as a scary thing that we need to do something about, but really sell the positive future that we can create through a more sustainable um, society um, and system. So in terms of selling the sizzle, it's talking about sausages. It's a very, I think it's a great analogy. When you think about how sausage companies sell sausages, they do not tell you to buy ground up pieces of meat in casing because that's not a particularly attractive um, offering. Instead, they sell you the sizzle of the sausage. They, they sell you mum cooking sausages before you get home or a barbecue with your friends where there's um, a good social vibe. And it's all about thinking, okay, what is the positive outcome of sustainability action? for your practice is it that staff are going to have a more enjoyable commute because they're car sharing or are they going to feel healthier and lose some weight because they're taking active transport to get to to get to um, the practice are your patients finding coming to the practice more convenient because you're um, encouraging group sessions for their family so they come in once rather than individually um, multiple times is it that the workplace is more enjoyable because it's um you have a stronger connection to nature through your biodiversity work. There's lots of different ways to think about the positive outcomes of sustainability activity. And so we very much encourage you to think, okay, well, what does a sustainability practice, a sustainable practice look like for us? What are the benefits of that going to be? And how do we bring people on board by selling them that vision rather than this is another thing that we have to do? Because fundamentally, it's not about doing anything new. It's about doing what we do now, but better and differently. Two more approaches that I very much uh, recommend thinking about. One is that you can't get everybody to get on board with your message immediately. Um, different people adapt to change at different rates. And this is something we very much see through the Green Impact Programme. So um, to use, let's use dental practices and sustainability as an example. There will be some practice owners and some dentists, perhaps many of you on this call, who have been doing some of the things that we've talked about, some of the things that Green Impact encourages for a long time. This is something you're committed to, you've gone out of your way to find out more about and to change your practices or establish your practices in a sustainable fashion. I would consider you to be the innovators. You're the, you're the first um, section on this particular bell curve. The early adopters are people that are very open to change when somebody suggests it to them. So I would anticipate that the early registries, is that a word? The early participants of the Green Impact Programme will be early adopters. So people that have seen the communications about the launch think, yeah, this is something for me. I'm really happy to get on board. Let's see what we can achieve. The early majority are a group of people that won't get on board until they start to see other people, i.e. the innovators and the early adopters, taking part and seeing some benefit. So it's one of the reasons that we'll be working really hard to showcase good practice from across the sector, to show the early majority that other people are doing this too and it's working and it's, it's having some benefit. And you can use this approach with your colleagues as well. You'll know who are going to be the innovators, who, is, who are the people that are already on board with the sustainability messages. You'll know who are the people that are quite open to change and then you'll know just from your day to day contact with people who are more likely to be a little bit more reluctant, a little bit more cautious about their uh, internal changes, or organisational changes. The early majority are really important because once you get them on board, once you've show, shown them that other people um, are are happily adopting changes and that it's impactful and beneficial, then you reach a tipping point, you reach 50% of people. And that means that the late majority will also get on board because they are similar to the early majority, but will only come on board when they see the majority of people around them um, changing their behavior or doing something differently. So the early majority are really important for getting the late majority on board. And then there will always be the laggards. And I'm sure you know many of these people uh, in your lives as well. And these are people that are very reluctant to change um, anything and quite often only change when they absolutely have to. So when it's forced upon them through through policy or law. Um, and therefore, we really encourage you to focus uh, on a 
and bringing people on board from the left hand side of the bell curve so start with your innovators and early adopters sometimes it feels like a a, a fun challenge or a, a, a useful challenge to approach the laggards first but in reality you'll have much more success starting at the left hand side with the people that are already more open to positive changes within your practice within your spheres of influence and then the final approach that i would really encourage um, and I very much feel like, um, like an academic supervisor every time I suggest this, but it's really thinking about how you use the time that we've um, provided for you so between now and November well. Um, we definitely uh, see differences in the organisations that utilise the programme um, through good planning and so engage with the program throughout the year really think about what are the acti activities and areas that they want to focus on and they think about how they're going to measure those they think about how they're going to resource them they think about when they're going to make those changes those organizations are much 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 more impactful with their green impact work than people that register think yep this will be a lovely thing to do and then the week before their audit think crikey we need to do something um, and so we really encourage throughout the talk actually you to to think about who are the people internally that you need to bring along with this conversation who are the key influencers and sometimes they're formal influencers you know, practice owners um, people managers sometimes they're informal influencers as well who are the who are the people that have a good social influence within the organization think about who you need to bring on board and then plan your time well um, across the the year to really see what you can achieve um, within the resources that you have available to you so this is some recommended approaches to the program based on the last decade of, of delivering uh, Green Impact. I'm sure we'll learn further lessons throughout this program too. And like I say, it'll be, it'll be my job working with the various different people that have helped support the development and the delivery of the program to, to share those lessons and to, to adapt the program as, as far as we can to respond to them. So that's what we're planning. That's an introduction to the programme and some approaches to take. I'm now going to hand over to Francis, Francis Mortimer from the Centre for Sustainable Healthcare, the medical director there, um, to, to share with you some further resources and support that we've signposted to throughout the talking, but that will definitely enhance your understanding of sustainable dentistry and your ability to make positive change within your work. Thanks very much, Charlotte. Um, yeah, just go straight onto the next slide, please. Um, great, so I, I just want to tell you about um, three resources. Um, uh, um, Sara has already um, uh, highlighted the series of BMJ, um, BDJ articles that are coming out. Um, and those articles were originally devised as a kind of academic version of um, the how-to guide for dental practices, which was developed alongside, um, which has got some crossovers with the Green Impact Tool, and they um, uh, they do support each other, and I think there are links from within Green Impact Actions uh, to the relevant sections of the how-to guide to, to provide some additional information. But you can also go to the, the, the web link that's given a lot across the bottom of the page here. <coughs> and... Um, and access the how-to guide directly. Um, when you get there, um, you'll, thank you, um, so you'll find, you can see just down the right-hand side, there's a menu um, that uh, opens out the different sections. Again, there's travel, equipment and supplies, energy, waste, biodiversity, measuring and embedding. And then with each one, within each one of those, um, there are the, the mini how-to guides that you can download as individual PDFs and you can see a few of those down um, on the example screen, which is the section on energy. So they go into a bit more detail than it's possible to do in the Green Impact Tool where um, uh, it's, it, the, the information is, is quite, quite sparse and uh, it, uh, to allow um, more uh, emphasis on kind of the logging the different actions and so forth so um, they could they I think they they work quite well together and complement with a bit more information um, and they each map to one of the the BDJ um, seven articles series that's coming out at the moment um, they also highlight look they're also intended to be very practical as well with sort of specific things that you can do in each category 
Um, do you want to go on to the next slide, please, Charlotte? Yeah, this is just to let anybody who doesn't already know um, know about uh, the Dental SASnet network. So this is somewhere that you can register and join a community of people who are interested in sustainability in dentistry or dental care. And um, in fact, that could just be patients, but it's mostly tends to be people who've got a professional interest. Um, and that's a good place to find um, resources, links to articles that are coming out, and you can also post questions um, and we can all try and help answer them. Um, it's intended to be quite informal, so it's both a place to kind of, if you're aware of a resource that's not already there, then we'd be really grateful if you would post it. Um, and that, that's a sort of central holding place where other people will be able to look it up in future. Um, but it also allows for people to just sort of post informal questions or um, uh, observations that they want to share. Um, one of the really useful resources that you will find linked from there um, is shown on the next slide, which is the um, Introduction to Sustainable Dentistry e-learning um, session. And this is hosted on e-learning for healthcare, which is the NHS England, uh, NHS um, and Health Education England platform for e-learning. And it's all integrated in the EDEN programme. And it's, it's accessible to both NHS and non-NHS people. And if you go via Dental Sasnet, you can find a guide to how to create an account if you're not from the NHS. Um, as well, just in case um, anybody's running into trouble with that. Um, and then you can access all of those resources free and you can get um, CPD credits for doing that as well. Um, so that's another um, resource that's been developed with the support of Health Education England um, and through the Scholar programme that Sarah mentioned. Um, and a lot of our work as Sarah's, uh, as Sarah and um, Charlotte, as mentioned, has been in collaboration with Public Health England um, at the NHS, NHS England supporting the Green Impact Pilot, of course, um, and, um, and Health Education England. So it's, it's actually a really strong collaboration. And actually, uh, in, in the um, national group that we've got steering the, the Sustainable Dentistry Programme, um, it's got a really great participation from a whole range of organisations across dentistry, including the BDA and the GDC and, and local dental networks and so forth and industry industry bodies. Um, so it's a really exciting area to work in and yeah, do do join up and um, get involved with Green Impact and with, with Dental Susnet. Thanks, Francis. I think it's really important to just stress that one of the things that we've really worked on with the Green Impact Programme is to not reinvent the wheel. And many of the resources that we're signposting to are very well established, well respected um, resources that have been developed by um, the Centre for Sustainable Healthcare. So we're really pleased to be able to, to signpost people to those resources rather than trying to reinvent the wheel. Um, and without the support of, of Centre for Sustainable Healthcare, but also the, the dental sustainability advisory group which which Francis just mentioned um, we wouldn't be where we were today in terms of producing the tool um, that we have so we're really grateful to everybody's enthusiasm and generosity um, to date and we hope that that it continues to be a really collaborative and impactful program so um, I'm actually going to put this slide first um, just to let you know that this is the toolkit URL so www.greenimpact.org.uk slash dentists and this is my email address here um, too so if you have any questions about um, the program if you want access to an example uh, login for the toolkit then please get in touch um, it's my job to support um, the whole delivery of the program and if it's not my um, it's not something that I can answer. I can definitely signpost you to, to somebody who can. And if you have um, want to see more information about the Green Impact Programme, there's an, a URL and a hashtag for social media that you can use to, to find out more as well. Um, 
following the webinar um, we'll send some further information around we'll send a recording of it as well as the CPD um, questionnaire um, and links to um, the slides and Cisnet as well so you can really get going and I think in terms of what we would planned for today that's the content um, that we prepared so very happy to take take questions from from anybody before we wrap up for the evening thank you so much for your for your time and your attention So, shall I can see the chat box. Um, right yeah, hand side I can now because I I've play, change. There we go. Okay, right. So, but it's empty. So, it's empty. Got any questions? <laughs> People are giving um, us a really easy time this evening. <laughs> it's difficult when you don't know where the people are. Just too clear, I think. That's obviously it. That's <laughs> obviously it. <laughs> And people are also welcome to unmute themselves and ask questions, of course. Absolutely, absolutely. Too. Like I say, I'm just going to put my um, email address in the chat box as well. So if people have questions following the webinar, um, you're more than welcome to drop me a line.